Hi, and welcome to the Punk CX podcast. My name is Adrian Swinsko, and I'm a, an advisor, best-selling author, speaker, and general explorer when it comes to customer and employee experience. I'm really interested in figuring out what it takes to build organizations that produce better outcomes for both customers and employees. So with that in mind, I seek out and interview CEOs, entrepreneurs, business and tech leaders, authors and academics to uncover some clues about what it takes to build this, such an organization. Now, some of you may know the podcast as a rare business podcast, but I decided to rename and rebrand the podcast recently. This is for a number of reasons. First one was to mirror the title of my book, Punk CX, which was published in June 2019. Uh, two, because I'm a fan of punk music. And three, it's just more fun, right? Anyway, if this is your first time listening to one of these interviews, then hello and welcome. And please do dive into the archives at adrianswinsko.com as I've now completed over 300 of these interviews in the last few years. If this is not your first time listening, then welcome back and thank you. Anyway, that's enough for me right now. Let's get into the interview. So welcome to the next uh, in this series of interviews on the, on the podcast. With me today, I have, I'm very excited in fact, actually very, very excited because today we have with us Sandra DeZoyza, who is Group Chief Customer Officer at Dialogue Axiata PLC. Hi, Sandra. How are you doing? Hey, hi, Adrian. Lovely to be on the program. You're very welcome. Now, Sandra, some people may know you, some people kind of, uh, won't, won't know you. So can you tell us a little bit about yourself and also about the work that you do? Yeah, sure. So I um, currently work for Dialogue Asiata, uh, which is, um, Asiata is our parent company headquartered in Malaysia. Mm-hmm. Um, Dialogue in Sri Lanka has been the market leader in the mobile phone industry for um, at least two decades. Um, so we have five operators in Sri Lanka. Um, I joined Dialogue uh, 22 years ago. I've always been heading uh, customer management. And uh, 12, uh, uh, 12 years ago, I was appointed as Group Chief Customer Officer. Um, I think we're ahead of a, a lot of the markets um, and countries around the world. 12 years ago, there were a handful of uh, CCOs uh, around the world. Mm-hmm. Um, and myself, I would have been the first in the Asia Pacific region and still remains to be the only one in Sri Lanka at a sea level for customer management. Um, and yeah, so I've been with Dialogue for 22 years. Progressively, we've moved from mobile to broadband, fixed line, TV, M commerce. Uh, we run uh, digital health, um, uh, ad and analytics. We run um, a lot of uh, businesses which are associated with the connectivity, mm-hmm. uh, uh, you know, connectivity really. Yeah. Uh, and um, I uh, obviously look after customer experience management uh, and customer management operations as well. Excellent. So I look after a 24-7 contact management operation, which is an inbound outbound contact center. Uh, responsible for IVR, for social care, for the app, uh, web self-care and so on. And also um, the retail footprint, we have 140 customer experience centers across the country, uh, which also yeah, which also come under my purview. And um, yeah, so it's, it's basically uh, literally seven day operations or 24 seven in the case of contact management. Um, also, yeah, also responsible for, you know, panning out strategy and NPS and looking after uh, the customer experience side of things uh, within an expert working group for Asiata, which is our parent company. So we are seven operating companies in this region and mm-hmm. I look after, um, you know, um, across functionally also customer experience. So, I mean... Uh, crumbs that's such a long list and <laughs> oh my word but I tell you what um, so you have one absolutely uber fan like a super super fan and that is Paul Greenberg who we both know <laughs> yes and he has written reams about you in his new book the commonwealth of, of self-interest which I spoke to um, Paul about uh, a couple of months ago when it came out 
and he's a you know he, a lovely I love Paul he is you know he he definitely uh, what's the word he gets called the godfather um, yes. of, of CRM and he really is he is the don in this you know in this sort of space he's been around for such a long time and he just you know he his knowledge knows no limits but he talks about you in glorious terms um, and about the work that you've done at, uh, at Dialogue Axieta. And now, I mean, I guess, in, and you say you've been there for 22 years and you've been kind of group chief customer officer at, uh, at you know, a Dialogue for like the last 12 years, we, but sort of before kind of pretty much everybody else. I mean, there might have been a few around, but it's like pretty yeah. much before everybody else. I mean, yes. Crumbs. I mean, Sandra, like, I guess my question was, would be, I mean, over the course of the 22 years, but also the course of the last kind of 12 years, I mean, like, and this, I mean, where did you start kind of like with all this sort of like stuff? Because I guess that's the thing. It's like a lot of people will be like, there's a lot of, there's a lot of activity around, you know, group, you know, chief customer officers or chief experience officers or so on and so forth. But then a lot of people yes. kind of like come in and they fiddle around. Yeah. And then they um and they and then they sort of cycle out into kind of into other positions because they don't really um find it hard to 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 get started to get going or make a difference and so on and so forth. But you've been at yeah. this for twelve years. I mean, like, yeah. Where did you start? Okay, so let me put it this way. Firstly, uh, yeah, I love Paul Greenberg. I wish I'd meet him one day. I hope to meet him one day. Uh, we we've never met. Uh -huh. So we've really spoken on the phone a lot and exchanged notes. And, you know, um, I was saying to him like, hey, anytime you're in this part of the world, at least not in Sri Lanka, but in some part of Asia, Pac, uh, I'm going to fly over to meet you. Let me know when you're in town because I really would like to meet him. He's an amazing guy. I haven't met him. Right. Uh, and he has great stories about, you know, a lot of appreciation for what I do here. Um, and um, he, I guess he just, knows me and all of our work from everything he's read, everything he's researched and everything I've said. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think he just catches my passion and my consistency for being at it for 30 long years. So yes, 12 years as chief customer uh, officer and 22 years at Dialogue. But my career, like I said, started 30 years ago mm -hmm. when I first joined the first mobile phone company in Sri Lanka, which was 30 years ago. Uh, and I actually set up what was a customer experience division, which which was non-existent. Yeah. Uh, luckily, I joined that company at the inception of that company. Uh, and 30 years ago, there was nothing called customer experience management. There were hotels that had guest relations yes. officers, right? But that's it. There was no customer service anywhere. Uh -huh. So literally, I think in Sri Lanka, I probably, you know, must be the godmother of customer service or something because I virtually started this whole movement or this practice of customer service in the country. Um, a life, that, that, is, that is a life in service, if ever I heard one, yes. Sandra. Yes. For me, it is a life in service. And, and for me, I, I, I mean, I've had opportunities to move to other types of work, uh, also to run a business. I have never been interested. I've always said no. I uh -huh. want to do what I believe in, what I love the most. Uh, and that is, uh, you know, in, in this line of work, I don't want to run a business. I don't want to do anything else. Uh, I like to spend my time doing what I like best. So I, I remember when I was in my first job, uh, the one 30 years ago, I was reading some book and I sort of happened to stumble upon this, um, uh, this saying, the quote from someone, I don't remember who, but it said, choose a job you love and you'll never have to work a day in your life. So and true. that kind of resonated with me and 30 years when I look back, I know that's what I did. I simply found my passion 30 years ago. I would not have known 30 years ago that that was my passion. And that was going to be what I would like to be doing for the rest of my life. But, uh, you know, three decades have passed by and I definitely know that uh, this is this is for me. This is for me life. You know, for me work is life. I enjoy my work, and I don't really think about it. I mean, my husband often complains that I don't go on holidays, and when there's a holiday, that I say, "Oh crap, is it a holiday? I want to work." It's almost <laughs> like if I don't get to work, I don't enjoy it. Um, I enjoy working uh, because I love the work I do, and I think about it as um, 
uh, as you know being a, being helpful yes. really you know my work is about helping other people uh, and yes by the way i get paid for it it's my job which is fantastic isn't it if, if you spend your whole life helping people and also getting paid for it yeah i think you can ask for anything more i think you're absolutely right i mean that's i mean i find myself i mean incredibly grateful that i get paid to do work that i like with people that i really like as well yeah and and if that means you know and it's like it doesn't feel like work it it feels yeah. like i'm getting i'm getting paid to do kind of just do stuff that i like kind of what's yeah. not to like about that that's kind of that's, yeah. that's crazy but given that all that kind of sandra i mean yeah you know what i wanted to do was just to kind of just reflect on um that the whole sort of customer experience sort of space, well, as it's now known, it wasn't really kind of known as experience back in the day. Yeah. Um, you know, but I have a view, and I wanted to get your take on this, is that yeah. there's, there's a lot of talk about these, like, service experience initiatives uh, failing to meet um, expectations, that they're just yeah. not kind of cutting the, cutting the mustard, as it were. Mm -hmm. And and I believe that that's a lot of a lot to do with how many of these initiatives are not connected to or aligned with the business's overall kind of like strategy, and that they're just mm -hmm. off there doing doing their thing, and yeah. but it, they're not really there to enable or support, or they're not really aligned with the, the business's overall kind of strategy. And that's kind of my working hypothesis right now. I mean, would you yeah. agree with that? Mm, I would agree with that. But also at the same time, Adrian, I think I have to say, perhaps I've been lucky. Mm. Um, the fact that I, even 30 years ago, as uh, just customer, ex, uh, customer service manager and then later customer experience head and VP, I still reported directly to the CEO, mm. right? Uh, and that just means that that CEO, my then CEO, Dr. Hans Vijay Sure, he held, I mean, he, he was an engineer. He put uh -huh. up the network for dialogue, mm. but he obviously for him, service was a big thing. Right. Right. Yeah. So fundamentally, he believes in service. Right. Because uh, our whole, our whole, uh, I would say, vision is about, you know, bridging the digital divide for Sri Lankans, for serving the Sri Lankan lives. Uh, I mean, enterprises, enriching Sri Lankan lives. That's mm. our vision, right? Yes. Uh, this is the whole thing about how we will provide connectivity to connect um, all individuals in Sri Lanka to make connectivity affordable so that they have best in class, uh, you know, they have access to best in class infrastructure, facility, knowledge, um, you know, and, and ways of do, being a global business, uh, global citizen as well as being a global business m m person, right? Mm. Um, and that is, our, I mean, that is what we want to accomplish um, and that, that's where that's what we are about. Yeah. I mean, he believes in that, and in order to do that, which is also about service and contribution to the nation, right? Mm. Uh, you you uh, have to fundamentally believe in the concept of how important service is, yes. and what you're going to really do to uh, make that happen, right? Yes. So right from a vision to our mission and if you think about our values we have seven values mm -hmm. uh, corporate values value number one is service from the heart so which, if which, a company can sorry if a company can put service from the heart as value number one connect it to your mission and vision and not just do that then you put people behind it put um, the required funding behind it right yeah I mean, I think then you th believe in it. No, absolutely. I mean, I think the thing is, is but I think you, you kind of touched on something, which is, you know, you can have some, you can have any all these initiatives, and if they are aligned with, um, there's not, it's not just about an, aligning your service and your experience strategy to your overall kind of business kind of strategy and corporate goals and, and et cetera, et cetera. But you also actually mm -hmm. have to support it as well, and I think yeah. that's what you kind of said, Dr. Hans, kind of like support supported it because he had you or your your area reporting directly yeah. into him because mm. he knew yeah. the importance of it so that's yes. actually that's interesting it's a real kind of like because there's no point just going to say oh it's aligned but then it's hidden away in operations somewhere mm. 
Because uh, most often it's either in under marketing, the CMO, yeah. or it's under some chief commercial officer or someone by the way, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so this idea of the, I want to go back to this idea about service from, from the heart, from the heart, which is one of your corporate yeah. uh, values. But then actually I also read that you launched this uh, company-wide culture and transformation program back in 2012 yes. called Service From yes. My Heart. It yes. was aligned, aligned to the, the, the corporate Same values. Same thing, yes. Yeah. Can you, so we, what, what happened? How did you do that? Because it feels to me okay. that, that culture is kind of one of the hugest kind of like boulders that we need to move to get yeah. this stuff right. Mm-hmm. So, um, well, yeah. So it's like this. When we, when we thought about, I mean, when we looked at, we had five competitors. We were doing pretty well. We were the market leaders. But we always figured that everyone else was copying us very quickly and bettering the proposition. Right. And also gaining market share. So we figured that all things equal sometime or the other, right? Which is your coverage, your price, your yes. product and all of these things. All things being equal. Uh, there's one thing that's inimitable and that is service and the service culture, right? right? Culture of a company is the one thing that no one can copy because you just can't copy it, no. right? While you can copy everything else and slap it and make it better and go to market faster, you can't copy culture. So we figured we needed to anchor our culture around one thing that was important to everyone in the, uh, everyone across the company and all employees. And we needed to anchor everything on giving them a target or something to focus on which they can believe in. And when you run a business for profit and you have customers, obviously customer has to be that thing, right? Or that person or or what is important. Mm. Um, With that in mind, if we are to build a truly customer-centric organization, we figured that we need to put customer at the center of our business. Mm. And that just means we we have to... come up with stuff that people can relate to all the way down from an officer executive or driver or, you know, an officer assistant or the security guard, yeah. uh, anyone, right. Uh, who the, could relate to something. And then that would be our customer. Mm. So for us, perhaps like saying customer is king, uh, which of course is an you sort of overused piece of, uh, you know, something, not something that people will want to really take too seriously. We, sure. we said, for us, it is um, service from my heart, which is employees say service from my heart, your, uh, like our passion, customer smiles. So it's like uh, my passion, your smile. And that was a, a, a campaign that we ran internally and we also then took it externally. So we have the, uh, TV advertising and all that that are centered around um, everyday life situations. Like let's say, someone's opening a door, you know, for someone to get in, helping someone, and then relating that to a a dialogue service scenario, Mm. helping someone cross the road, and saying that as a dialogue employee, you are always a service person, regardless of whether you are in office or outside office, whether you are a lawyer, an engineer, a salesman, or someone in customer service. You are a dialogue service. You represent the brand dialogue. Mm. And we serve two thirds, uh, like we we serve, uh, you know, two thirds of our nation. Mm -hmm. And which means every time you go anywhere, regardless of where you roam, where you are, you will always have a dialogue customer around you. So it's it's almost like, it's almost a bit like saying this, this, this isn't just about, um, customers and kind of like um this is about a broader sort of like social and national responsibility yes it is definitely right uh and and then it also is about building pride yes. in people when they represent dialogue to say hey i'm a dialogue employee right and i yeah. live in a certain way which means if you see someone in trouble something has fallen and it's a senior citizen you pick that up you help that person why? Because your service culture is what you live. Yes. It's not something that you do inside the office and forget about. Even when you're outside on the road, you help an old person cross the road or a, you know something like that. It also means you're doing it because you're representing dialogue. 
and, and you want I, to leave that value. And can I ask about that? Because that's like, you know, um, sometimes that'll come really naturally for people. Yes. And, and, but then for others, it's going to be, uh, it's going to be new. It's going to be different. It's going to be, you know, cause it's not necessarily kind of the way that they are. They might find it kind of like hard. I mean, so yeah. I guess I've got two questions. One is like, did you, how did you help people, I, I guess, learn this new kind of like, or adopt this new mindset and learn new behaviors or, yeah. and, or did you end up having to, end up losing kind of people and then end up having to hire new people that fit with that type of mindset and you end up with a kind of almost a replacement of people if you know what I mean yeah so I think in uh, in the service front line where uh, customers uh, are met with every day or you speak to customers every day then it's a little more rigid because if someone doesn't fit into a you know, service ethos, the way we do business, the way we want them to do, conduct themselves, then of course, maybe they, they, you know, they get to go away or they leave and they can't cope up or whatever, because it's then not something they like to do. So if it's, if you're not a natural helper, yeah. if you're not a naturally uh, a person who's a positive and, up, you know, you can up and go. And if you're naturally not somebody who can think on your feet and provide solutions quickly to problems, yeah. then you, maybe you're not right for the job. Sure. But going beyond that into the middle officers, back officers, more professional services such as accountants, lawyers and engineers, uh, it was really, really quite tough. It's taken, I don't know, years. And I would still say we're still on a journey of uh, doing that uh, sort of uh, transformation of, of culture mm -hmm. in those uh, areas where people are taking time and we do so much to get them there so we have even at an induction program and there are new recruits we teach them about SFH what is what we call it service from the heart SFH so we teach them about SFH um, you would see videos posters um, lots of gamification we run across the company even today after 10 12 years or whatever or, or more yes um, and uh, we have our annual awards at dialogue we have uh, a whole segment which is like custom experience initiative of the year custom experience champ of the year sfh champ sfh initiative of the year and so on mm -hmm. they are all of our main awards like revenue and this and that and new business growth, development, profit, all of that. But we have this segment of service awards as well, which is one of the pinnacle awards to be the, you know, custom experience initiative of the year and service champ of the year. Right. And so everything is kind of aligned also. Uh, and we pick up along the way progress. Then we have a whole community, which is cross-functional. So across all of the divisions or engineering legal sales and so on yeah uh, we have service champs so all those who are good at it we've identified them as service service heroes and service champs we have two different kinds and then we give them badges we work with them cross functionally to look at uh, customer problems and uh, uh, how to resolve customer problems that uh, arise from some impact due to something they do or you know from any of their divisions and so on mm. um, so we have a whole community of service heroes service champs we have training programs around those and we have all this gamification stuff that happens so it's a whole lot of uh, how would i say like uh, almost even at a subconscious level they've been bombarded with sfh over i mean more than a decade right so yeah. kind of get to you like everything is about SFH everybody can even if you don't believe in it you can actually talk about it as if you do believe in it and you'd practice it because you'd know it inside out by yes. now and so yeah? what's, the, what's the difference between service heroes and service champs so we originally started off as service champs where if ever they got a, a commendation from customers external mm. customers or commendations from internal customers, which are other employees. Yes. Uh, we collected all of those. We had like service champs of the month and of the division and of the year and so on. But that was purely based on all of those um, commendations that you got from internal and external customers. Mm. Uh, then above that, we kind of two, three years ago, set up a program called Service Heroes, which were people who kind of did all of that but also 
uh, new to uh, resolve complex problems across any kind of complaint area right. and from across any division those people who are confident enough to jump in and sort a problem out from any division so let's say if someone is in engineering and they want to sort out a problem to a customer that looks like an IT problem or a sales problem they can still jump in and do it because they've built out this whole network of people and become so good that really uh, complex resolution and complaint handling and inquiry management right so they're like superheroes they know everything about everything they know internally whom to go to the moment they understand okay this is the kind of complaint they know where to find the solution and how to sort it out super fast right and so, so how, those can, then became the service heroes okay so that and can you just give, give us a bit of context i mean how many employees does uh, dialogue have so um, we have about 4500 employees right. we probably i don't can't tell you an exact number but we probably only have about uh, 100 service heroes okay so it, 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 i'm just trying to get a, a, um, an idea of the scale of it because some people might go oh that's going to be really hard to scale in a large organization you're like going well no you've just told us you've got four and a half thousand employees and about a hundred service heroes so you yeah. know that's kind of like one to every 45 people I guess. yes it's not too bad and no. the, the chance you have lots more because everyone can uh, make commendations that right? you can even game it you can get like 10 of your friends to send say good things about you like a hundred times <laughs> or whatever and then you become a service champ right. but you can become a service champ but you can't actually jump out there and help everyone like i can confidently say there's no problem uh, that can possibly ever happen at dialogue for any customer in any product service that we have that i can't resolve yes right yeah and and that's the whole thing right i i know that i can even though I don't do it on my own personally by myself, I know I can get it done. Yeah. So there's no problem that I can't sort out for a customer in this company, right? Yeah. So these are people like that. Mm. These are divisionally people who sit in other divisions, uh, regardless of whether they are sales, accounting, finance, legal, uh, you name it, you know, whatever. They, they still, they are superheroes. They can resolve complex problems because they know whom to reach out to and get the job done. Regardless, yes. they can just get it done, no matter they, what. They are like your super nose in your network. Yes, yes. Excellent. So those, yeah, so those are what they are. And we, we the, they also have what we call, a, like instead of a fund, we call it a fund bucket, like if you ND bucket. Yeah. So they actually have higher values of fund buckets they can use to, uh, the, you know, as empowerment. I mean, obviously our frontline associates also have fun bucket. Everyone has uh, up to a certain value that they can, like no questions asked, they can do uh, refunds and do stuff to help customers out, waivers sure. and so on for complaints. But these guys have a huge amount of money in their fund bucket because right. they're handling complaints cross-functionally. Yes. Um, yeah. So, so, so they have other privileges also, therefore. <laughs> Yeah, no, absolutely. I think that's that 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 that's that's. I mean, that's just. I mean, that's just a lot of, but it's very very cool. And um, the thing about, I also wanted to explain. I wanted to ask you something also about to explain how this culture, the service from the heart, um, yeah. how it extends all the way through the organisation. And because you told me before we started talking today about. Yeah. Um, availability and your commitment to it from a from your own perspective given that you are the group chief customer officer but also your ceo's sort of uh, perspective so yeah can you tell me about kind of like the um the level of commitment that you're kind of like um i feel like laying down in this per in pursuit of service from the heart yeah so in a way i can say it's kind of um, I won't say it's been easy. It's been one uphill task and every day is challenging. But the fact that I've been with the company for 22 years, which is also around the time my CEO was then appointed CEO from mm -hmm. being the technical director who put up the network for dialogue. Yeah. Um, so, so we are the initial management committee who started this company, mm. took it also to being number one after about four years of uh, five, four, five years of existence, stayed there for like 18, 20 years which means that the people in our organization believe in us. Yes. Right? And they believe that we walk our talk 
and we mean what we say and we deliver and they've seen that over i mean is if we're the most valued brand we're the number one customer experience brand in the telcos uh, we have you know the best revenue market share subscriber market and all of those um, uh, csr we were rated highest as well mm. so we are a very sort of exemplary company in sri lanka uh, those employees who work with us they you know they, they know that they work for a really great company mm. and that they can look up to the leaders and they believe in the leaders because they actually walk their talk mm. right so that's the first thing so mm-hmm. the next thing is because we were a young management to team who all started off together so the uh, say for instance a uh, cto and uh, you know a cio and a lot of those uh, c levels they also started off working around the same time so they've also worked here at dialog for 22 years or more but the majority of them right yeah. so we we obviously work very well together we are in total sync we all believe in the same thing they all believe in service because service has been something we've anchored on it's worked for us it's it's a um, like top priority for the ceo and obviously so uh, they they don't have a problem we don't actually have issues about service when when we talk about customer experience we look at product experience billing experience uh, you know the contact experience the sales experience and so on mm. uh, so similarly we look at the network experience right mm-hmm. what is a network experience for the customer so we have a couple of um kpis if you will or targets and kpis related to each of these areas and the nps which forms the customer experience index for each of our c levels also right. which is published by me for them we publish it every month every quarter our bonuses and stuff are you know it forms part of our bonuses and our performance review yeah um, the, the nps in fact forms a part of uh, uh the bonus as well uh, you know and um the, the, we have an nps which has been mandated by our corporate uh, corporate center or H- hq yeah uh, to each of our operating companies the seven companies in this region mm. so even for the of course ceo nps is a uh, kpi right yeah and if we don't meet our nps that impact is across all our 4500 employees yes no absolutely yes. but i also going to think the um the thing one other thing you were telling me as well is that it's almost like as a demon as demo as is how you demonstrate your commitment to the what type of service and experience that dialog is what is wants to deliver is that if it's say 11:30 on a uh sunday night as it were yeah and yeah. i have a problem that can't get resolved Yeah. Then I, I can call you, can't I? You can. Tell me how that works. Yeah, so well, a lot of people actually, I mean since I've worked here 22 years, my number is almost known to is very easy to find my mobile number. <laughs> uh, but also everybody goes on LinkedIn. I just noticed that there was uh, some customer complaint on LinkedIn as well where I'm tagged. Right. Uh, lots of people tag me on Facebook and reach my inbox on Facebook as well. Uh-huh. Uh, if they don't know my personal mobile number, that is. Uh, but if not all of those things, then they just go on our website and they look at escalation path. They look at me and they just press the button call and the call connects to me. Uh, uh-huh. And obviously, regardless of time, um, I, I, you know, if if I'm awake and and you know I'm. It may, it's a way of life for me. I don't really have an issue with it, but I usually go to sleep at two a.m. or three a.m. Right. Um, so obviously, I, I any call. I mean, no one's going to call me after three o'clock in the morning. Yes. Because uh, everybody else will be sleeping too. Yes. Um, and I usually wake up like at about seven or eight in the morning. Um, so if very unlikely that I'll actually miss out on a call. I miss between but seven th- and eight, but it hardly ever happens. And if I have missed calls, I just return my calls when I wake up. Yeah, I think. The, but I think the thing, the thing that I kind of it strikes it strikes me about that is that you are sitting on the in the the executive kind of your part of the executive team in a, in a large um, mobile telecommunications um, and connectivity kind of company in Sri Lanka. You know that yeah. has. What seventeen million customers that you talked about? Yeah, um, so we have about a twenty-two million population, and we have seventeen million customers. Yeah. yeah. So, 
but then to say that kind of customers can pretty much um, yeah. kind of like call you pretty much anytime if they want to escalate and escalate a problem. And I know that you say that this is, this is, this is your life. This is kind of what you, you love doing, but it's like, yeah. I just wanted to highlight that because it's, de it's demonstrable evidence as the amount, how far you are willing to go to, to yeah. deliver kind of what you've promised. And I guess for me, I wanted to kind of make that explicit because I wanted to also make the point and say, Ladies and gentlemen, when you're listening to this kind of podcast, is to say this is the the level and the type of commitment I think that is is sort of required to be able to yeah. do this sort of work. And if you're not willing to do that, then you should step aside. Honestly, because for me, it's a commitment. I mean, if I were to tell you a little bit about my personal life, I have a daughter, so mm -hmm. just one. So which means I've always been. Uh, you know about work I've been lucky I've had my mom-in-law live with me she's always been there to take care of my daughter since she was little mm. um, and you know my husband's been really a lot of help as well so mm -hmm. I've been really quite free to work throughout these 22 years my daughter is like 25 now so she's actually three years old when I came to work at Dialogue right um, so I've and, and now she's uh, you know she's she's graduated she's working she's she, uh, lives in Melbourne okay. um, so it's just me and my husband at home now um, you know and he pretty much does his own thing um, and, and I am free to work I'm free to work 24 hours if I want to right. I don't have anything that uh, uh, requires my time uh, apart from work really because sure. I have nothing else to do I mean I don't have to run house I don't have to look after anyone I don't have to you know look after kids or mm. think of the menu for the day or anything uh, I've sort of pretty well organized myself over my course of time uh, you know in life yes um, most of it I outsourced to my mother-in-law when she was uh, she was uh, li living yeah um, uh, and now there isn't anything to outsource really so because it's just my husband and I yeah and uh, yeah so it's like uh, really it's a I'm free to work if I want yes. 24 hours a day and I sleep like probably five hours, um, six maybe uh, on a good day. But otherwise I'm always working and I work because I like to. And that doesn't mean I don't do anything else. Yeah. I mean, I'm always, uh, you know, I, I go to the movies, I chill all of my Sunday. I just completely chill, uh -huh. uh, do nothing. Then my Saturdays, I kind of do salon shopping, hanging out with friends, all yeah. of that stuff. Right. But if ever there's a call, I just pick up my phone. And yes. of course, I read my emails. I get complaints on email, on WhatsApp, on Facebook, on, uh, you know, all of these things. And I just take care of it. I look at it and I pass it to someone who can sort it out. Yeah. Um, I just so kind of want to... I, I just can take care of it. Yeah, no, absolutely. I just wanted to highlight, Sandra, the... the, um, the um, the level of commitment that you've kind of like sure, uh, yeah. that, you've, that you've laid down, but I also kind of know that kind of like it doesn't just stop at you, is because actually people can go and, and and escalate even further and go and get in touch with the CEO, and it goes and, and yeah. connect to his not to his mobile, but it'll connect to his his his, his line in the office directly. Yeah, yeah. And, and so I guess what I'm saying is that, that that many kind of senior exec teams seem to be disconnected from the um, what goes on. At, um, or they put kind of like barriers between kind of what goes on, on the ground and customers yeah. and themselves. But I'm going to say what I'm trying to illustrate is that you have collapsed that distance between and made yeah. yourself available. And I think that's a yeah. testament. And, and, but, and I actually think, because here's the interesting thing is that, you know, you've just been voted ladies and gentlemen, there should be a fanfare now to do with trumpets and things because you've just been voted <laughs> 2019 CX Leader of the Year by MyCustomer.com. I mean, that was a process I was involved with, but you were, as you know, a country mile, kind of a, the standout kind of candidate of that year. So first of all, Sandra, I wanted to say uh, congratulations. Uh, on Thank you. That. It was so well deserved. Thank you I mean, so much. Um, so how did you feel when you kind of, when you kind of were notified that you'd kind of won and things? Because it's a big, I guess it's a global award. It's a global award. It's amazing. I actually didn't think I would win. So what it was, was when, um, when you know, although I thought that I was deserving, I couldn't tell outside 
uh, in the rest of the world you know there could be others who also done a lot of work and a lot of impactful meaningful work and yeah. from uh, larger countries and much larger companies and corporations mm. so i felt in the scale of things and uh, looking at uh, those others who would uh, would have nominated themselves from uh, the rest of the world sri lanka is like you know probably unheard of for a lot of people dialogue may be unheard of it's a small company and in the scale of things i didn't think anybody would bother taking my um, you know my nomination too seriously uh, but if i were to look at in terms of commitment in terms of impact and in terms of a lifetime spent doing this i felt that no one else could be more deserving because i don't think there are very many practitioners that have been doing just this for 30 years yeah right and, but it's not just about um i i, I must say sandra it's I, it's it's i don't think it's just about long service it's also about accomplishments as well and about yes. kind of building that sort of that organization i mean that that really lives and breathes um right to its kind of core the service from the heart you know your number one kind of corporate sure. kind of value so, yeah, but the thing was, Adrian, I was thinking the impact is just in Sri Lanka mm. and not felt across the globe or halfway across the world. So I felt that if you were to look at impact, then I had no chance at all. Yeah. Right? Uh, because our impact, obviously, we're serving the Sri Lankans and in uh, business in the Sri Lankan market. Mm. Uh, so, so that was the reason I thought I would not stand a chance to win, therefore, if you were considering the, that kind of impact. And then uh, when I got into the shortlist, I was really thrilled because there were only two uh, Asians um, and yeah. the rest of the shortlist were all from the Europe and the US and so on, uh, you know, mostly. Yeah. Um, and the other Asian, I know him as well. Okay. Uh, he's the one who actually told me when I met him in Singapore at some conference we were both speaking at. He said, hey, guess what? You and I have made it to the shortlist. Uh, not bad, you know, being Asian. Uh -huh. So I said, wow. Both said, oh, I guess, you know, this is as far as it goes. And he said, yeah, even that I think is a good accomplishment. Um, so, I, and, and then I kind of kept this thing in my mind that, okay, 7th of November is when the uh, winner is being announced. And uh, I thought, oh, it doesn't really matter because it's not like I would be, you know, the winner. Uh, <laughs> but, what <it> was, <laughs> but what it was, was on the 7th of November was our Asiata senior leadership gathering right uh, in malaysia which means all seven of our operating companies in the region were all uh, were all together in malaysia right and it was also our awards night for across asiata right right uh, and and our team is digital transformation so we had 17 awards being awarded across various categories including customer experience profit revenue all these things um, and so there were functional awards as well as opco level awards mm. and uh, while this award ceremony was going on and dialogue was winning majority of the awards so unfortunately out of 17 awards we took away 10 <laughs> uh, and we were already a sweep because we are, you know, Dialogue's known to be the best of the group. Uh -huh. So we took away, like, company or up of the year and all of the financial, uh, you know, um, 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 success and all of that. Sure. A digital transformation and all of that. So there were all these awards. And then in the middle of it, I suddenly realized it was a servant. So by evening, so it wasn't even in the morning. So like in the evening, uh, late evening or, you know, the, um, so I looked at, um, uh, I looked up on my dot, uh, uh, you know, on my customer. Yeah. And, uh, and then I kind of almost screamed from where I was sitting. I was like, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, I can't believe it. Oh my gosh. And then the guy who was seated next to me was the chief, uh, chief HR officer for Asiata. So from our head office, right? Right. From our corporate. So then he asked me, why, 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 what's wrong? So then I just passed him my phone and he looked at it. He read the whole thing. I said, can you send this link to me? So he said, email it, email it. So I just sort of emailed it to him and then forgot about it. Right. And then I was like thrilled because, I, okay, I was just focused on this award ceremony that I was at and what was going on for dialogue. Mm. Um, and then all of a sudden, uh, they decided, you know, they said, and now where is a, press, a special 
award that we want to talk about today. Mm -hmm. uh, of course, we don't have an award or anything for this person. So we can only tell you about the award and read some of the judges' comments. Uh, and then they started reading all this and actually put up my photograph with the mycustomer.com winner, CX leader of the year. And then I got a standing ovation for, from, you know, from across uh, everybody who mattered to me, right? Because yeah. it's my boss, my boss's boss and all my peers across the region and all that. Uh, so that was like the best possible, you know, recognition I could have ever got. That's awesome. So I was actually, yeah, I was actually blown away. I was so, so thrilled. Um, and yeah, I was, you know, I was in tears and I was so happy. I, I was also shocked and I was so thrilled. I was grateful. I was happy and I'm, I'm just glad. Um, well, because sometime back, I, I can't remember when, but I think about seven years back or so, I also won the Customer Impact Award from uh, CXPA. Uh -huh. Yeah, so that, that also was like a global award and that was uh, also like 10... 10 uh, awards around the, the um, uh, across the globe and uh -huh. there were seven for practitioners and three for service providers uh -huh. uh, like like, uh, like vendors, partners uh, so of that seven as well I was the only Asian in that bunch of seven or, or a bunch of ten so I was thrilled back then as well so yeah so I really believe now that you know quite humbly my team and I and dialogue uh, do you know do compare well with anyone out there in terms of customer experience practices uh, and what we do and what we achieve so really I, I do believe uh, you know very humbly that uh, we do try hard and, and I think we are being recognized now for being uh, you know good at what we do. do you, you know um, Sandra you are um, you, you so deserve the um, the accolades that you get, and the accomplishments so the, the accomplishments that you've achieved, and and it's one of the reasons why I wanted to talk to you is because you know one just to kind of say congratulations, and two to further kind of recognise and amplify kind of like you know who you are and what you've done because I think you're inspiring and uh, and. You know the idea that you're, you know, kind of you're, you know, you're, that you're in Asia or whatever. I mean, that's for me. That that is just kind of by the way. It's like <laughs> excellence kind of happens where excellence happens. That's it. Yes. It's yes. not about where. It's about it just yeah. happens. And I think yeah. that what you're what you're doing is is you know is excellent. And you're leading the way and showing others the kind of way. And your passion speaks volumes. And I think that's the biggest thing that I've taken from all of this is that, that, that is, is that the, the passion and the, the commitment and the longevity of it all um, is, is, is remarkable. And yeah. I mean, based on that, if I was to say to you, you know, kind of what advice would you have for other, either current CX leaders or people that are leading kind of, you know, experience initiatives or aspiring um, leaders or kind of just practitioners? I mean, what advice would you give to them based on, on, on your experience? Yeah. So a couple of things that come to mind. Mm -hmm. um, one is, I think, consistency and never giving up. If mm -hmm. you truly believe in something, walk your talk, fight for it. Fight nail and tooth if you believe in it. Look at people who are willing to join you, collaborate with you, support you on your journey, and just pick up all those people who can support you on the journey. Uh, work on it uh, from the top as well as the bottom because you need it. You need all, all together around and rally around, um, uh, you know, what you're doing. So I would say working with your CEO and having his buy-in as well as your rest of your colleagues uh, is a really important piece, but equally important would be those out there dealing with your customers because now that's a different game. You are talking to your customers, you're seeing your customers, you're meeting your customers, uh, you know, and that you do daily, uh, you know, over and over and over. So when you have that kind of power in your hands to be able to make sure that you represent your brand to ensure that every moment of truth that a customer of yours has with your brand 
and you represent your brand to make sure it's a positive one and not a negative one sure. so in my mind i would say every time someone who uses dialog or knows of dialog or comes in contact with anything dialog uh, whatever that experience is uh, they need to think about it and feel good about it and feel positive about it and not feel bad or discontent or you know mm -hmm. irate or you know have bad things to say so it is our responsibility every single one of the the employees and of course you know as a ceo to try and make sure that people understand that that your employees understand that and that they rally around you believe in your cause to want to work on it with sincerity so i would say sincerity is a like a really important thing uh, if you're not sincere about all this stuff then you're paying lip service to it it doesn't really work right because after a while you get caught out and then you you got to go or something because you can't make it happen you can't make it real and you can't sustain it uh, time after time year after year um so i think really it's about making sure that you know you've got that buy in mm -hmm. and that you are strong enough to consistently work on it for no matter how long it takes yeah. as long as you know and you believe in it and there are others who believe in it and work with you mm -hmm. equally Perfect. i think it's important to be uh, somebody who's constantly learning constantly right. willing to learn learn from everything everyone and adapt and change so if something is wrong or something is not working i'm the first one to jump and say hey it's not working forget it drop it let's mm -hmm. move on right mm -hmm. if i make a mistake equally i'm the first one to say sorry 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 i made a mistake sorry i was wrong right can we move on but equally if i believe in something and 100% sure it's really right then i fight fight really fight hard hard nail and tooth hmm. if i have to fight for a year or two or 10 i'll still do that right because i am a consistent and i'm a fighter and i'm a believer and i will get it done right so i think that's you know it's just the staying power i think you just got to have the grit yes uh, and the staying power and you have to be willing to put everything behind it yes no i think i think you're right i mean cuz these sort of the sort of the sort of improvements and transformations or um uh the changes that many people are talking about are facing the, the, these things are not they're not quick fixes and also of course. and and also i mean you can change a process or you can change a system or you can change a piece of technology and that might you can count that change in you know hours and days and weeks and months and, th and things but sometimes we're yeah. talking about actually behavioral kind of culture mindset sort of changes yeah that then then you're you're not we're not talking about hours and kind of days and weeks and months we're talking sometimes we're talking years yeah if you're in a large organization yeah so it requires that staying power Mm -hmm. um, you're absolutely right. Um, so, and, and one more thing, okay. I, I think you also have to know that you're never going to achieve that kind of dream. So if you say excellence, it's a journey. Mm -hmm. You probably work on it until death. But yes. however, if you are better than yesterday, today, and so on, you know, then yes. you're making steps every single day to make it better, right? Yes. And you can only be better than everyone else if you've been doing that over thirty years or whatever it is. Yes. Right. so for me it's also like not like a goal post so i achieved this goal i achieved this i am the nps lead in the country or i won this award so i'm this is it for me now mm -hmm. i can rest i can relax it's not like that yes because uh, for me all this recognition um, and that's a good thing about you know dr hans who is a ceo we're very humble people we the moment we win an award we're happy about it we say thank you to our customers who made us a winner Yeah. and then we will strive to work harder to make it better for you yes. and then we just forget about uh, the award the next day or the next week yeah. we don't rest on our laurels we just forget about it so these awards you know that's why i don't even remember when i won the customer impact award whether it was 5 years ago or 7 years ago yeah. because the award is as good as okay you won it now this is good now you have a new story because you have to be that much better now so you yeah. set yourself a newer standard to try to do better and more to be an example to everyone else and because it's an expectation from others if you want an award then you got to be even better right mm -hmm. so it's a journey of excellence and i'm just saying as long as you don't just stand in the same place but you're making baby steps every day along the way you may never get to this perfect wonderful 
amazing, you know, place. You, you never may, but it doesn't matter because all you need to know is that you know you're better than everybody else. You've done your best and you always on this journey of stepping forward one foot a day and not stepping backwards or staying in the same place. You know, the, it reminds me of, and I'm just, I'm just looking it up now. It reminds me of a, um, there's, do you like quotes, Sandra? I love quotes. Okay. So there's a quote that comes from, uh, it comes from an, uh, I remember watching an interview with a guy called, well, um, a, a guitarist called Buddy Guy, who's like a, a blues guitarist and singer. Okay. And he, and he was talking about, you know, his relationship with his father and some advice that he got given by his father. And, mm -hmm. and his, his father's advice to him was this, don't be the best in town, son. Just try to be the best until the best come around. And Say that again? Is that over? Is that the whole quote? That's the whole quote. It says, so, don't yeah. be the best in town, son. Just try to be the best until the best come around. So, okay. And, and what, the reason I like that, because I think it talks to your, the, your point around excellence and it being a journey, is like, yeah. it, when his father was talking to him about don't buy, try and be the best in town, yes. because almost when you get to the best in town, you're finished. Yes. Right? Yes. And it's yeah. been like, you're never finished. You're Actually, never finished, yeah. It's all about just being better than you were yesterday. Yes. Um, and, the other, some, something else that my boss, the CEO was always saying to us was that, you know, if, if you are best, it also means you have no one else in ahead of you mm -hmm. because followers can imitate and copy very easily and catch up to you very easily. Yes. But you have to be that much better if you don't have anyone ahead of you and you have to charter your own course and path, right? Mm. You, you have to be ahead of, you have to do work that much harder to be uh, heading the path really. Because sure. you have to chart your own course and territory and you don't know what's out there. So you have to be the one to come up with it. Yes. Whereas if you are second to someone, you have always have someone and all you have to do is to focus on, okay, I'm going to beat this one. I'm going to beat this one in front of me, right? Yeah. But when you're ahead of everyone else, you, you, what are you going to do? You, don't, you can't say, oh, I'm going to beat this person. So you have to really think about how much better can you be than you are now and today. Yes. Yeah. So I think that's hard work. And, uh, and that's hard work for forever. <laughs> yeah, no, absolutely. But you, you know, you take it, you take it on. I mean, so that make that makes me think then, Sandra. So it's like, uh, given that you, you know, dialogue is dialogue is um, has a you know a leading position in in in, in Sri Lanka now. Yeah. I mean, what is um, kind of what is bettering your best look like for dialogue right now? Like, what's next? What's the big things you're taking on next? <laughs> Yeah. So anyway, one of the things that I think we are looking forward to next year is rollout of 5G because with 5G comes an amazing um, array of possibilities. Um, uh, technology brings to you uh, so much more. And I think as much as we transform, you know, human lives, as much as human beings start adapting to everything digital and it becomes a way of life, a lot of those, um, I would say a lot of the uh, interactions one might have may not essentially be with human beings anymore and maybe with a lot of machines and bots and so on. Yeah. Um, the human touch is going to be so much harder to, to, to sort of manage, maintain um, and, and that sort of thing. And also all of the digital interactions, I think we need to try, the biggest challenge would be to also try and humanize digital care. Right. right. So that would be one of my big challenges is to try and humanize digital care and how can we possibly mimic or maintain uh, some of those things that are hard now. Mm -hmm. um, for instance, a smile, uh, the emotions, uh, you know, do you understand if a customer is happy or sad, angry or anxious? Sure. Those things might sort of, uh, you know, slip by us. And, yes. uh, you know, so we have to try to figure out how, how we can keep it real mm -hmm. and to humanize digital care. From a dialogue point of view, that means it just opens out uh, a whole new uh, set of challenges on how we uh, serve customers, which may not essentially now be, it could be machine to machine. 
uh, mm. and not just human beings right so if some let's say if some remote something goes down your you know your fridge your communicates and your car communicates and all of that and something breaks down maybe the messages come uh, uh, you know of these breakdowns and stuff from another machine and not a human being right mm. so we have to think about a whole new set of challenges and uh, figure out what customer care and customer experience and managing customer experience means in that kind of realm of things mm -hmm. um, uh, but also the fact that there <clears throat> you know you can have perhaps a digital twin you have holography um, right. you have video and there's such a such a lot of possibilities uh, that uh, we are sort of um, uh, looking at analytics the new kinds of business lines that you can build based on analytics um telcos as you know sit on a lot of lot of i don't think anyone else has much as much data on customers and behavior and uh, you know uh, demographics and all of that as much as the telcos do right usage sure. patterns and everything so how do we monetize those there's new business models that come around so we were looking at a lot of different kinds of uh, new businesses and i see that in the next decade uh, the 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 opportunities we've had to make revenue out of uh, being a predominantly mobile network using voice you know mm -hmm. more than data but now more so it's data but voice will completely deplete i don't think we're going to be able to make any more money out of selling voice mm -hmm. it'll be data but yes. in data also there's so much more other opportunities and possibilities with 5g mm -hmm. um so so is this is a lots of new business models so i think we'll completely transform ourselves to something different and uh, you know we we may not just be a mobile communication uh, provider anymore perfect i mean it's like but then i guess at the, at the right at the very very heart of it is um is how do you kind of hold within all of that how do you hold on to um service from the heart i mean if it is uh, the core of the way in which we you built your company mm -hmm. i think you can still make it work uh, it may have different forms and variations i can't really tell you now because i haven't thought about it too much for the future sure sure, sure. yeah but but i think we can adapt as we go along because uh, you know if, if it's your business ethos if it's your belief if it's your culture uh, and you're training the the you know the younger generations who are coming into your business the importance of being human mm. and the importance of being a human being yes. one that's caring i mean we try to teach our employees the same thing we like to teach our children uh, and perhaps our mothers and grandparents taught us that nothing's more important at the end of the day when life is done you're not going to take away your riches and your successes and your accolades and your rewards sure what you will what will be truly immeasurable priceless and of true value is the human beings you've collected along the way the human experience how you've helped others what they think of you as a human being right yeah um yeah have you been a positive influence uh, uh on other human beings and how much of an impact have you made on other human beings to make them build their lives and to get better and so on so on right so mm -hmm. i think we try to sort of inculcate uh, that in all of the employees who join us even the younger ones in the newer generations mm. so hopefully i think that will rub off and they will all uh, still continue to uh, you know uh, uh, keep keep that focal point and you know maintain the importance of a uh, service and and being human perfect um more so because of the fact that we are about helping the country helping the citizens of the country make their lives better yeah um and and how we can enrich their lives awesome i i mean i look forward to kind of keeping tabs on kind of how you can do that sandra i mean and um you know if i if i may you know i'm conscious yes. of of time and i'm conscious it's getting a little bit late there for you even though that's all right even though kind of the um um you, 
you know, you live and breathe this sort of stuff. But I just thought, <laughs> if, I, if I may, I'd yes. like to ask you just to wrap up um, a couple of kind of questions that, that are related to, you know, I published this new book that I was telling you about called Punk CX in, yes. the, um, in the summer. And as part of all of these kind of interviews following the publication of the book, is yeah. I've been asking people for to 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 uh, a couple of questions, and the first one I was like, "What one or two words do they think would describe a punk approach to CX?" I mean, what would you, what would you say if I asked you that? So two words come to mind: one is passion, and the other is sincerity. Right. I mean, if you're passionate to your course, and it yeah. has to be a course, it's a, it's a course. It's not just a job. Yes. Right? It's not a thing you come to eight to five and earn your salary. My boss no, all, often laughs about it and says to me that even if we don't pay her, she'll still be at work. It doesn't matter. <laughs> um, yeah. And, and he would give me, you know, whatever, you know, whether it's my increment or whatever he says, ah, these things don't matter. But here's the letter for your you know, increment for the next year or bonus or whatever. Yeah. They don't even bother me, you know, because I, I do it because I like to and I want to. Yes. Um, and, and those things so reward beyond a certain point doesn't matter anymore right you, you know money can't buy you happiness right yeah. but if your happiness comes from feeling, feeling like you're valued that you matter that you're doing something that is of value to other human beings and that makes you happy then you're a happy person and you're a positive influence on others uh, you're happy and life is good and, and you're in a good place. And by the way, you're also happy because you uh, won some awards, you've got recognition, you work for one of the best companies, you also have the money to go with it. Yeah. Uh, yeah, life is great. It's all good, right? It's fantastic. <laughs> Perfect. Thank you so much. <laughs> and so the second one um, is what company or brand do you think epitomizes uh, like a punk CX kind of ethos. Like a, they, they're, they're not scared to kind of do something kind of different, you know, to stand out. Um, well, from, nothing... Uh, apart yeah. from yourselves, by the way. <laughs> yeah, actually none, nothing comes to mind immediately. But I think a few of the companies um, that come to mind have done great things. I mean, uh, myself, I also sort of look to benchmarking uh, Ritz Carlton for some of their practices and some good stuff they do in, in, in customer management or loyalty or experience management for the brand, right? And the kind of customers they uh, have, their regulars, their loyal customers and so on. Mm. Uh, same with Apple for the fact that Steve Jobs changed the world. Yeah. Um, and he's the one who made it all happen and everyone else are followers. Mm -hmm. uh, so I'm a very passionate and ardent uh, Apple fan. Uh, although most often everyone says, oh, Samsung has better products, better this, that, whatever. I say, no, 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 no. They came after Apple. Apple uh, changed the world. They're the, you know, others are followers. Mm -hmm. So I'm like a huge Apple fan. So I think there are things within some of these companies like Facebook, Apple, and, um, you know, even um, KT uh, from a telecoms point of view, KT in Korea. Yeah. Uh, Telstra in Australia does some good stuff. Um, there's also um, uh, in the US, one of the operators now, which one? The DT operator, can't remember their name. Um, T-Mobile uh, doing some cool stuff. Yeah, T-Mobile. Team, team, T-Mobile does some great stuff as well. Yeah. So, yeah, there are lots of companies who I admire and look up to for taking bold moves mm. along the way. Perfect. Sandra, um, this has been an absolute pleasure and an honor and a privilege to talk to you today. I mean, is there anything else that you'd like to add? Um, um, not essentially, but, uh, you know, anytime you feel that you want to chat to me about anything at all, feel free to let me know and I'll be more than glad to pitch in, share my point of view, perhaps, or, you know. Um, talk to you you know I, I like to collaborate yeah. and uh, I think I want to also say thank you to you I, I mean if I didn't apply for the award and you weren't judging the awards and uh, you know then uh, Paul hadn't come around and said whatever he did to you and we would not have you know met or made the connection at least uh, 
uh, the way we have right now. So I think those are the good things about you know life. It's making connections, right? Yes. Making connections that matter and are value. And so I welcome the opportunity and the pleasure is all mine actually, Adrian, that you gave me the opportunity to share um, our little story from little Sri Lanka across the world, uh, you know, and uh, I, I'm glad that I was able to share my story with uh, uh, the rest of the world uh, through, through, you know, your, the opportunity that you've given me today. Um, you know what? Uh, thank you, Sandra. But it's actually, I mean, really, it's like, I just want to say, you know, um, thank you for spending some you know, time with me today. I mean, and it's great to connect and, and, and I really enjoyed our, our chat. I just want to say, you know, congratulations on the work that you do, on the awards that you're receiving. Um, you are a true pioneer and inspiration to that 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 whose story kind of deserves to be kind of like kind of told, and so it, it's it's my my privilege to be able to and kind of help my it. honor and, and yeah thank you and so um thank you so much pleasure Adrian thank you so much well that was cool I hope you enjoyed it. I did, and I always do actually, because I always learn something new when I speak to some of these amazing kind of people. And it's always something new that I can incorporate into my writing, speaking workshops, and other sort of advisory work that I do. Now, if you're interested in learning about any of that sort of stuff, uh, then you can find out more about how I work with clients over at adrianswinsco.com. But one final thing before I go, please consider heading over to iTunes or Spotify or whichever podcast platform you choose to use, and do leave a review. Every little helps, as we say. Anyway, that's all for now. Thank you for listening, and do tune in again soon. All the very best. Cheers. Bye.